So you've probably heard of a guy named Andrew Tate. And Andrew Tate's pretty popular right now. He's got a lot of videos that out. He's got a huge social media following. He's got a lot of traffic. And uh, as far as I know, he's one of the most searched out people in the internet. He says that he is the highest Googled person or his name is the highest Googled name in uh, in the world right now. So um, I he put out a final message. He got banned recently from Twitter to Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube. And he put out a final message about why he got banned and some of his thoughts and what he's going to do going forward. And I thought it'd be interesting to kind of go over some of the things that he talked about and some of the things that he's been espousing over the last little while and why he might be so controversial. So I wanted to get into it a little bit. I'm not going to go in any particular order, but I'm going to share with you some of my thoughts about Andrew Tate. My name is Paris Clough, and this is Financial Self-Reliance. And I'm excited to help you learn how to manage, protect, and grow your money. Now, one of the things that makes Andrew Tate so controversial is the way that he comes across. He's really a dynamic person and he's got a lot of things and he's got a very strong opinion. What I wanted to share with you as I watched this video, as I went through this different video that he had was the different things that he touched on and some of the things that I've been looking at and seeing as I've been watching his TikToks and watching his social media myself and my own experience over the last several months. So one of the things that I noticed is the mental toughness that it really takes or that he really espouses in his particular situation. He says that he has an iron mind. And I think that's critical. Actually, that's actually a really good thing to kind of exemplify because we all need to have more mental toughness. Now, there's a lot of issues going on right now with mental health issues, mental um, insecurities, and having mental toughness or the strength mentally and emotionally to be able to conquer, to be able to go out and do things and, and really have that confidence and that competence I think is really important. And that's something that he, depending on who, how you look at it, you might think that he goes overboard with his mental toughness in the way that he's very cocky or arrogant. And I agree that some of the things that he says can really kind of border into that and really kind of actually go into that. But I also think that it's important to realize that we all need to have a little bit more mental toughness, a little bit more of that. We don't care what other people think. We don't care what other people are going to do. We need to do what's right for us. We need to do what's good for us. And we need to make sure that we're following our own path. And of course, we don't want to be rude. We don't want to be mean. We don't want to be disrespectful. However, we need to remember that certain people aren't going to like us. Certain people aren't going to be able to get some people. Sometimes people come into our lives and it's okay for them to leave. And, and sometimes we may not see them for years. Uh, but that's okay because what when they were in our life, we just need to make sure that we do our best to, to make sure that they have a, a better life from having met us. And if for some reason we've messed up or we haven't done what we're supposed to do and we maybe don't have the best of relationships or maybe that person just really feels bad about us and then they want to talk trash for or they really just we really kind of didn't do our part to make sure that that friendship can really flourish then, you know, learn the lesson, learn the lesson and grow from it. There's definitely a reality to wanting to make changes to ourselves and kind of rebirth and kind of regrow and re redevelop. And I think that's a lot of what his final message is in this video is that he went through and he did some things that he, although his message was on point, he wanted to get those things across the way he did it. He feels like he needs to change. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to change. If you feel like you've done something and you didn't necessarily do it the way that you wanted to, or as you now review the results, you're looking back and saying, you know what, I, I probably should have done this a different way or a better way. That's the beauty of being a human being is that we can make those changes. We're not stuck to a, an instinct. We actually have the capacity to respond to the things that are happening around us differently each time they, they uh, happen to us. So I really admire in a way what Andrew Tate's doing and whether his motives are pure or not, I'm not necessarily going to judge that, but I really admire what he's doing and how he's being honest and being forthright. He's telling people and he's being vulnerable in a way telling people, look, I did some things that in a way that based on results aren't what I wanted to have happened. So I'm going to revamp. I'm going to kind of go back to the drawing board and look at what I need to be doing. And that's true with our finances. Like how many times have you gone through life and you've looked at your finances and you realized I'm not where I want to be. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. Or you don't feel like you've accomplished what you want to accomplish or what you set out to accomplish. Well, make the change. Stop what you're doing. Maybe even withdraw a little bit. And then replan, reorganize, go back to the drawing board and figure out what you need to do to financially succeed in life or what you need to do differently or what you need to change in your life to make a different result moving forward. I think that's really admirable. I really appreciate as I was listening to him, I thought, man, this is a guy who despite all of the arrogance that you might see or he might put forth and it might be an act, who knows? But he really seemed to have a really strong head on his shoulders, I should say. Just a really good perspective. And he, he seems to be uh, have a really widespread insight as to uh, how we're supposed to be doing this experience in life that we're here doing. 
So another thing that I was uh, really intrigued by him is that he just talks about money so often. He talks about his Bugattis. He talks about all the things that he's he's buying and purchasing. And, and that's fine if you want to have that lifestyle. In fact, I highly recommend it. Don't do it at the expense, though, of having your basic needs taken care of. And that's one of the things that he talks about quite at length in all of his videos, everything that I've ever seen, he talks about being a provider and that male persona, that role as a man to be a provider for your woman, for your wife, for your uh, children, and to just be a provider and a protector. I love that. I think that's a traditional male role that needs to be, that masculinity needs to be honored and inspiring to people. I think part of the reason why we have a lot of mental health issues is because there's so much debate about who we are, what we are, and when we have a firmly and defined role, it's much easier to fit into that role and then find exceptions from there. But when we're so nebulous and just, oh, well, I'm, maybe I'm this today. Maybe I'm that today. Maybe I'm not. Maybe maybe masculinity is not good. Maybe it is good. Maybe we should be this. Maybe femininity. Maybe uh, feminism. Maybe not. You know, the reality is, is that when you have clearly defined roles and you have clearly defined set of rules, it's way easier for you to work within those rules. And not that we need to have a tyrannical situation where we have so many rules that we're just oppressed, but we definitely need to have some rules to guide and direct us and keep us on the path. That's why many paths and mountain roads have those railings to keep you safe. There's there's safety in having commandments. Like in the Bible, it talks about the 10 commandments where there's safety in those commandments. They're not there to restrict us and keep us oppressed. They're there actually to keep us safe from falling into harm. If we do the things that we're commanded not to do, then we'll end up with consequences that we don't want. And so it's okay to have a commandment when it provides that boundary for you to keep yourself safe. It's important to self-respect, self-introspect, and to self-evaluate. Uh, and I think that's what one of the things that I admire about Andrew Tate's final message is that he spends a lot of time sharing with us how he's introspecting and he's looking inward and he's taking, he says this several times, I'm taking responsibility for my current situation. I love that. I absolutely love that. Too few of us are taking responsibility. We're blaming this guy, blaming that guy, blaming the environment, blaming our skin color, blaming our gender, blaming the, everything else, blaming the debt, blaming the man, blaming the, the corporations, blaming the marketing departments. You have control. You're the one that decides how your money is spent. You're the one who decides whether you're going to budget. You're the one who decides how much money you're going to make. You're the one who decides what you're going to do to make money. It's all on you. No one else is going to do it for you. And I love the fact that he clearly defines that I'm going to take responsibility for who I am and what I am and what I'm doing and be the man in in uh, in his in the life of his women and the life of his children. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, I don't always agree with him and his, uh, you know, lasciviousness and his willingness to kind of sow, sow his seeds. But I, I, I am a family man. I'm a Christian family man. I have a wife that of 20 some odd years and ch five children. So I'm, I'm more of a family man and, and that's kind of what I love to do. And that's my worldview. And, uh, however, the way he defines the role of a man as a protector and as a provider, I love that. That's absolutely right on. One of the other things that I really like is that he talks about creating enough wealth to then give back. And that philanthropy is, is important. It's powerful. It, it actually is in the Bible where it talks about tithing. Tithing is giving 10% back of your of your riches and your wealth and your increase to charity, to those that stand in need. His The way he defines it and the way he talks about it in business and the world is, is philanthropy, giving back, having charities. These are fantastic things. I had no idea that he had these things and that he was developing these, these things. Now, whether or not you want to think that they're you know part of his you know ploy or part of his manipulation or whatnot, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that he's actually doing things to give back to the world and give back to communities. And that's fantastic. I absolutely love that. And you can't give if you don't have enough yourself. And so he's he shows an example of making money, making enough money that he can live the lifestyle that he wants, and then having leftover money that he can then give to others and help others in need. That to me is is awesome. I, I think that's awesome. So one of the things I really don't like about what's happening to Andrew Tate right now is this whole cancel culture idea. Now, you may or may not agree with somebody, but that doesn't give you the right to go and ruin their, their reputation, ruin their life, or ruin what they've built or what they're created, unless you absolutely know that something is evil about what they're doing. And from what I understand, the only thing that he really has done that's necessarily may or may not be evil is that he's got an opinion that's way grand, more grandiose than some of the rest of us. And he's very firm in that opinion. And that's not necessarily even evil, but 
what I feel like is that um, there's way too many people wanting to cancel others. There's there, If there's a voice that's different than yours, instead of trying to expand your mind, and he even says this in his final message, he says, if you want to have a discourse with me, if you want to have a discussion where we can speak man to man, mind to mind, and we can have an open discussion, I'm willing to change my whole view on something if there's a discussion that's that we can reason together and we can come to a conclusion together and we can feel uh, edified together. And that does not to describe someone who is completely full of themselves or completely arrogant. Somebody who's willing to sit down and have a conversation and work things out and even say that he's willing to change his view given the right parameters or the right description or maybe the right discussion, that's somebody who's willing to make changes. Now, he's really strong and he's confident in what he has created as a worldview thus far. So that, I commend him for that. In fact, that's fantastic. If more people were firm and more people were as passionate about what they've chosen to, chosen to do with their life, then we would have a much more, uh, I think we would have a much better world. Honestly, if if people, not that they're passionate to the point of tyranny, but they're, they're passionate about what they do. They stand up for their rights. They're, they know and understand liberty. They understand what they want to do. They under, they fight for that, but they do it respectfully. And he said that so many times in his, in his final message, be respectful. At the end of the day, I want to just kind of wrap up with these thoughts. If you don't like what other people are saying, one of the reasons why they're getting out into the world is because they have enough money to be able to do that. Many years ago, I was in a conference with somebody at my church and one of the leaders said that money gives you voice and the, the greater the voice you have, the, the more that you can impact the world. And so I felt like, you know what, if making more money just makes you more of what you already are and you're a jerk and you have a ton of money and now you're a bigger jerk, why shouldn't more good people with strong values and moral values and integrity, why shouldn't those types of people become rich and wealthy and be able to manage, protect and grow their money as well so that the, that voice is just as strong, if not stronger as a, as a people, as a country, as a world, we need more people that have a strong moral compass, that have a strong moral code, that respect values, that respect men, men's roles and women's roles, that can have dialogue, that can, have, that can sit down together and reason together and come up with edifying results and solutions to problems rather than constantly worrying about the problem. We need more people that are solution-oriented, more people that have a bigger voice, that have moral ethics and moral integrity and understand moral agency and, and just have a good, strong moral code. And in order to do that, you need to have more money. In order to have more money, you need to manage your money per properly. You need to make more money. You need to manage it properly. You need to grow it properly. You need to protect it so that it's preserved. And then you have the time, energy, and effort that you can go out and affect the world and make a better change. If you don't like what's happening in the world, manage your money properly, protect it properly, earn it properly, grow it properly, protect it properly, and then have the time to go out and make the changes necessary, have the resources to make the changes necessary, have the means to make the changes necessary. If you want to make a better world, learn how to live within your means and then grow your means and then use those means to affect change in the world. I'd love to hear your thoughts and feelings. If you've even seen this video about Andrew Tate, just put it in a comment down below. Let me know what you think, what you thought. If you like him, if you don't like him, if you think he's over the top or if you think he's got a really good message, a lot of the messages that I've listened to him say are right on. And several of them, I'm like, eh, I don't agree with that. But you know what? You're entitled to your opinion. And I'm totally, I totally love that we have the agency to be able to be in a situation, an environment, in a community where people can say what's on their mind and we don't have to always be offended or we don't have to worry about retaliation. We can have free speech and that's what America is all about. And that's what freedom is all about. And I really love that. So I hope that you got a lot out of this video. I hope that you had a chance to watch his video and kind of get an idea of what he's doing and that you'll step up and that you'll be the kind of man that you need to be or woman that you need to be and that you'll provide for your family and that you'll be and, and develop values and you'll develop a confidence that will get you from where you are today to where you need to be and that you'll make the change in the world. You'll become the change you wish to see in the world. If you missed the last video you, I produced, you can find it here. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel up here. And if you want to check out a video that YouTube thinks you might like, go ahead and check that one out up here. Have a great day and we'll see you on the next one.